Hey, it's Captain Scott Walker and Blue TV. I'm going to take a few minutes today to show you how we set up a boat to go kite fishing so you can do it yourself. Bring my kite too high or you're out there? Yeah, for me and Captain Steve, our go-to reel and rod combination is a Talica BFC 20 and a Trez 6'6", six six extra heavy. Uh, why do we, why'd we choose this outfit? Kite fishing, you have the line going from the rod to the kite down to the water. And at that moment when the sailfish strikes and you want to get that loose line out, these reels will gather over 60 inches per crank. And that'll get that loose line back tight with the rod tip quicker than anything on the market today. As for the rod to match the reel, I always prefer six foot six rods over seven, just for the fact that when you're working out of a rocket launcher all day, it's almost impossible to get the tip of a seven footer. Six foot six gives you a little more lifting power as well. And I, we prefer a medium heavy action. So that when we do have a fish that sounds on us like a big black fin tuna, we can still lift it. Uh, you can go a little lighter, uh, for the sails, but at the end of the day, when you're sail fishing, you're going to have a lot of bycatch, big kings, bonita, and you want to be able to lift those fish. So, a nice medium heavy to heavy is what is our go to, and a six and a half foot rod. Got a bite! <laughs> I didn't see it. The bobbers went down real low. The kite was really low, and it's, you know, the wind didn't stop blowing. I don't know why it was going so low. Head shaking. King Mackin. Oh, King Mackro in the lip. The waters were full of mackerel today. Of course, they won't pop off when you want them to. No, no, no. Hooks right in the right spot. Wonder how many catch if I had four baits in the water. All right. If you come in with that one, it definitely needs to go up. The ideal selfie setup is 20 pound mono over top of a 40 pound sh top shot of braid. That way you don't have to keep filling your reel every, every season with a full spool of 20. You can keep that braid underneath of there and just do a nice splice to it. And then every season or every uh, tournament, pop off the mono on top, then slide your uh, fresh mono on. It only takes a few minutes instead of taking all day. For our leader choice, it, it varies uh, condition to condition. When it's windy, tournament, charters, first timers, uh, old friends. Uh, but the two choices are basically 30 pound or 40. 30 when you're tournament fishing, you just want that little extra edge uh, in case the sailfish are a little bit uh, spooky. It's not going to break, but you're not going to get real close to the fish for great pictures. But if you have some friends and family on board and you want to get a, you, you want to enjoy the boat side a little more with the fish. The 40 pounds going to hold up better so you can get them alongside, grab his bill, pull the hook out and get some nice pictures in the water before you letting them go. So like I said, 30 or 40 pound, we prefer fluorocarbon just because it's more abrasive, resistant and you know the teeth of a big dolphin or a tuna or the bill of a sailfish can really do some damage on a leader during a 10 or 15 minute fight. The, the standard kite setup you're going to see in everybody's cockpit is really simple. The ring that'll attach to your clip, they come in a variety of sizes to match this, the style of clip you, you use. There are several different brands of kite clips and whatever one you choose, just buy the appropriate ring that'll lock in there without getting stuck on your kite. A fluorescent float, I prefer smaller, less uh, obtrusive corks. They make them in a variety of sizes, lengths, colors. I, I choose pink, some people like green, some people like other colors but a nice float that you can see a lead to be determined by the wind each day or size baits anywhere from a half ounce to three quarters to maybe even an ounce if it's super windy and you got small baits but if you have big baits goggle eye doesn't need a lot of weight because he's going to swim all day long but when you get to smaller thread fins or pilchards you're going to need a bigger weight to help help hold him in the water when it's on a windy day but that's something you can choose every morning when you're setting up your rod and then a, a quality 75 pound snap swivel to attach your 15 foot pre-cut leaders. Smaller, always works better for us. You can make them as you need them, or you can sit one day watching Into Blue, 
and fill up a nice uh, yo-yo full of 15 foot liters ready to go. This particular 6-0 hooks with 40 pound. And I got another one right here, 6-0 hooks with 30 pound. It's all, just, like I said, it all depends on the day and, and the people on board. The most important part about kite fishing is actually the electric kite reel. We're lucky enough to have these Shimano Force Masters. You know, 20 years ago, we were using old electric deep drop reels. Now they make them small, concise, and super fast for bringing kites in. And once you do it one time by hand crank, you're never going to want to do it again once you use the electric. They, when you get in, into the toothy critters, and believe me, when the kingfish find you, they're going to keep you busy for until you can either pick up and leave or start catching them. So you're going to be bringing that kite up and down, up and down. There's nothing better than a nice, smooth electric reel to get the job done for you on a nice... Uh, short pole so you're not reaching up over your head to launch the kite. This is, this is our setup here. It's a 18 inch Shimano Therese kite pole with the uh, Force Master Electric. Not only do you need electric reel, you need a really quality high-vis braid because this line's going to be going up and down through guides all day long. It's going to get all kinds of force from wind changes, gusts, running forwards on a fish. So our go-to is 80 pound. You can go lighter you can go heavier. 80 pounds for us flies every time. It rarely ever parts, and it really just is a, a great combination for this smaller electric reel. You made your electric reel purchase. You've got it full of 80 pound braid, and now it's time to go fishing. You got to buy the kite clips. They come in pre-made packages of three. You can buy them pre-spooled and put them on your reel, or you can do them yourself. I like to keep them about 125 feet away from the boat. Before the first one goes out, that ensures that my kite is in good clean air. So I don't tie my first uh, stopper knot until I'm 125 feet out. That way, while it takes a few minutes to put the bait into the clip and make adjustments, I know that, that I don't have to worry about the kite dropping into water because it's in good clean air, it's doing its thing, and gives me a, a, a moment to set up my baits because these are just like outrigger clips. They have to be adjusted every day for the different wind and different bait choice. So again, these little clips are adjustable to release the, the bait fish when the fish bites, but every day is different. So you, gotta, you have to constantly be addressing those issues. So these particular clips that we, we're using now are by R&R Tackle. Black's Clips makes it another set as well, and you're, it's just personal choice which ones you choose. One of, the, one of the best parts about kite fishing is, although we prefer goggle eyes, thread fins, pilchards, anything works that's legal fish, blue runners, legal yellowtails, anything that wiggles can be used for a bait source. Um, that being said, most of the inlets on the east coast in Florida have bait boats available for you to buy goggle eyes or fresh thread fins every morning on your way out, or else you can learn how to throw a cast net and catch your own. If I know I have a, a sailfish trip the next day, I already have bait penned up probably for over 30 days. On those pretty days and nights, we go out and catch our goggles and evenings, we pen them up and have them ready to go for a month or two later because whenever the sailfish are biting, they're usually hard to catch bait. But you can also just leave the dock in the morning almost anywhere in Florida and find a, a, a bait patch and catch threadfin herring or pilchards. That's more of a no local knowledge thing, but it's just, again, go to your local tackle shop, ask a few questions, and they're going to be more than happy to lead you in the right direction to catch your own bait in the morning. Or give you a quality uh, guide that will uh, provide it for you. So your next trip out, don't be afraid to go kite fishing. Go out there and get what you need. You can get everything you need at your local West Marine. They have everything I've showed you here today, plus some instruction on how to catch the bait in your area and definitely help you set up your rod and reel.